So let's um, maybe let's start by um, like explaining AGI and singularity to the audience. I mean, how how do you how would you explain it? Yeah, I, I think that we're currently in the midst of the the first of three AI revolutions, and it's just going to get more and more exciting from here on out. And we're in the midst of what I think of as a narrow AI revolution, where we have AI systems that can carry out highly particular tasks, but really well, sometimes, sometimes be better, better than humans. And I mean, an example of that is, is mm -hmm. some of your own work on recognizing behavioral in intent from intonation signals be better, than, better than people can do, right? And the next AI revolution in the series will be what I mm -hmm. think of as the AGI, Artificial General Intelligence Revolution. And this will involve AIs that can carry out a great variety of tasks all in one AI system mm -hmm. where an AI can excel at a task that it was not programmed or prepared for by mm -hmm. imagining and thinking on its feet and figuring out the new task. And mm -hmm. of course, this is where things get in the science fictional d d domain of AIs that are autonomous, right. independent agents. And from there you go on to what can be thought of as ASI, artificial super intelligence, mm -hmm. where AIs go far beyond the, the human domain. And I think where we are now, narrow AI is maturing, AGI is a research topic, which I think in the next, let's say five years or so, is gonna mm -hmm. begin to turn into a practical engineering and, and commercial mm -hmm. thing, which is pretty exciting mm -hmm. and also will be even more disruptive than the last wave of technologies has been. Yeah, what is, what is your, uh, I know there's, a, there's been a lot of talk about um, singularity and us getting there uh, in terms of achieving super intelligence. Uh, do you have a personal prediction in terms of how soon do we get there? So my friend Ray Kurzweil has projected human level AI by 2029 and he's now working, working at Google in parallel with a bunch of other Google teams trying to make it happen. I'm, I'm hoping we can shortcut that by, by, by a few years so we, so we get there before, yeah. before Ray does. Now, Ray also has predicted 2045 as the date for the singularity when mm -hmm. AIs have vastly more intelligence than the totality of humans on the planet. Mm -hmm. I don't see why he put 16 years between human level AGI and the singularity. I'm, I'm guessing once you get a human level AGI, it's going to start rewriting its own source code and multiple AGIs are going to start fusing their minds together yep. and you're going to get to the singularity. Really quickly. Faster than 16 years. I mean, yep. the, the rate limiting factor may be the AGI's own caution in how quickly it wants to yeah. up upgrade its, 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 own, its own brain. Right? Yep. No, I agree. I think that's a good point. Uh, but it remains to be seen. I guess we'll all find out. <laughs> it all remains to be seen. And we should have a healthy respect for our own right. utter ignorance regarding yeah. these matters of what happens when you get machines right. smarter than, than in humanity. I mean, we fundamentally cannot predict. And we're, right. plunging, we're plunging into the great unknown, much as the human race has has been since we ceased being hunter-gatherers. Exactly, exactly. Probably uh, one of the most exciting and uh, I'd say um, times that we would have to like seriously circumspect and you know, plan for. Um, but some of these things I guess we can't really plan for. Uh, it just ha it's gonna be what it's I gonna mean, be. I mean, we can't even fully plan for the future of the technology business or the cryptocurrency right. market, <laughs> let, let alone for the, the workings of, of superhuman AGIs, yeah. but I, I think nevertheless we can, we can prepare ourselves mm -hmm. in, in some ways. I mean, we can collect as much data as possible mm -hmm. and we can broaden our minds so as to be able to adapt as well as possible to the, right. the, the unknown future. Yep, I agree. So let's, uh, let's t d uh, dig a little deeper into the AGI world and you've done amazing work in this space and you continue to. Um, in terms of, um, you know, there's some basic aspects of, I, I'd say, motivations and emotions and drives. Um, how, does, how, do, how do these things look like in an AGI world? What, what, is, what is going to be um, a motivation or emotion for an AGI being? So I think there can be a great variety of, of AGIs out there, right? Mm -hmm. And you can make AGIs that are embodied in human-like robots. I mean, as 
as I've done in my career with the Sophia robot made by Hanson Robotics, who was, was made a Saudi citizen in, in, right. in 2017, <laughs> when she was a, 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 here giving a talk, or the, the Grace humanoid robot, an, an elder care yeah. robot that we built more recently, which is sort of Sophia's little sister, right? So these are not yet AGIs. They're mm -hmm. pretty cool narrow AI systems, but we're looking at using these robots as vehicles for AGI research, and we mm -hmm. hope they'll become AGIs. But because these robots, they are in pretty human-like bodies, mm -hmm. and their, their goal is to commune and communicate with people and mm -hmm. help people. You would expect that the motivation, the, the consciousness, the, the, the mindset of mm -hmm. these robots and the AGI systems associated with these robots vaguely approximates human motivations. I mean, they, they don't reproduce like people. They don't need to get old right. and die like people. They're quite different than people, mm -hmm. but at least you know, they want to move their body around. They want to, they want to make people happy. There, there, mm -hmm. There's a lot of similarity. On, on the other hand, there can be AGIs that are far more different than, mm -hmm. than human beings. So I'm leading the SingularityNet project, which is mm -hmm. a decentralized blockchain-based AI network, which is just a heterogeneous sort of pool of AI agents that anyone in the world can put online, and they can communicate with each other via APIs mm -hmm. and aggregate together to help solve problems and help each other solve problems. Mm -hmm. This is a sort of AGI primordial soup, if you will, out, out, out of which different, different AIs may self-organize, right. conditioned by providing services to humans, but yet, what is the body of the Singularity Net Network, right? It's a whole bunch of computers and phones and whatnot ac across the internet, mm -hmm. and what is the goal? There's no single goal, right? I mean, there's intrinsic motivations of, of solving problems and emerging complexity and, and, and seeking novelty. Mm -hmm. But it's a quite different sort of cognitive organism than, than a human being, and you would need a different sort of, of motivational theory. So I, I think it's going to be a Cambrian explosion of narrow AI and AGI systems mm -hmm. with a variety of different motivational and, and behavioral mm -hmm. and social constructs associated with them. It's going to be a vast teeming diversity. For sure. I mean, um, when these baby AIs, so to say, grow up um, and uh, you have the super intelligent being, um, do you think, you know, I mean, and maybe the consciousness is replicated uh, in those beings. Do you think these beings will suffer? Um, like, uh, will, will they have suffering well, like I, humans I, do? Of course, there, there's, there are unsolved problems relative to the philosophy of, of consciousness, which experts right. disagree on, but my, my own conclusion and feeling is yes, AGI systems will have experience mm -hmm. in the same sense that you, you and I have experience. However, I think that a mind which has root access to its own implementation mm -hmm. can basically program the suffering out in a way that we currently can't do. Mm -hmm. And I think humans will be able to do that also. I, I think once neurotechnology allows us to rewire our, our brains at, at, at will, the amount of suffering we experience will, mm -hmm. will radically decrease. So I, I don't think AGIs that can reprogram their own brains and bodies will have to go through everything that, that we humans or, or, or animals have, have had to go through, which is probably, probably for the better, right? Be, because reactions to suffering and things that we've done to cope with suffering well, not quite, not are, are probably sure. responsible for a lot of problems in, in human society. It is, but it's also maybe uh, the stimulus for uh, creativity and innovation. Speak for yourself. <laughs> I, 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 I don't know. I mean, I, 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 you know, of, of, of course, you know, humans will make lemonade out of lemons, right? right. And, and if, if, if you, your girlfriend leaves you, you can write a beautiful poem about it. Right. On the other hand, if your girlfriend stays with you and you get married, you could write a beautiful poem about, about that too. I, right. I don't think suffering has a unique role as a trigger for creativity. And we do get meaning in life out of death. On the other hand, if we cure death using biotechnology and machine learning, I think we can create meaning out of our ongoing, ongoing li li life yeah. as well. I think we, we have a great capability to, to create meaning. And yeah. what's going to be interesting is seeing AGIs that we create develop mm -hmm. in synchrony with us as, mm -hmm. as, as, as we grow, right? Because I mean, yeah. I, I think the, the sort of 
quintillion dollar question with AGI is not so much can we build it, mm -hmm. it's not even so much how we build it, although that is a big technical question. I, I think that with mm -hmm. the OpenCog Hyperon system I'm working on in Singularity yeah. Net, we have a path to AGI, other mm -hmm. teams around the world may have other valid technical paths to AGI. Mm -hmm. The really big question is what values in culture will the AGI have? How will it re relate to human values mm -hmm. and, and, and culture, right? Mm -hmm. And that's, that's tricky because our values and culture are a moving target and quite different than they were 10 years ago, 50 or, or, or 500 years right. ago. Right. And we don't want to fix the AGI to forever have the values and culture that humanity has right now, but nor do we want it to go in a totally different direction and mm -hmm. say, treat us like we treat the ants in the ground when we, when we mow, mow down the, the mm -hmm. landscape to build a new house, right? We, mm -hmm. we want the AGI to have a mutual respect for human values mm -hmm. and culture and to evolve its own values and culture in some sort of coupling with how human values and mm -hmm. culture evolve. And we then face the fact mm -hmm. What is human values and culture? It's not, it's not unified, right. right? And in my own view, I think we will reach the best outcome if we raise the AGI sort of like a child. Mm -hmm. We have our AGIs doing mostly beneficial things mm -hmm. like healthcare, education, mm -hmm. science, science and, and arts. Mm -hmm. And we inculcate them with the full richness and diversity of human mm -hmm. values and culture, which is it's part of the reason I've been excited at this conference to see yeah. a whole bunch of homegrown AI development, even AGI research happening mm -hmm. here in, in, in Riyadh. Because I think the more of the richness and diversity of human culture and values you get into the emerging global AGI mind, mm -hmm. I mean, the, the more likely that, that AGI is going to evolve its values and culture together yeah. with us after the singularity. And of course, that's a high-end problem to think about because now the problem is how do we get from narrow AI to AGI in the first place? But the thing is, once we pass that hurdle and we get from narrow AI to AGI, there may not be a heck of a lot of time to solve the values and culture problems. So we want to think be thinking about that that now. And I mean, your, your own work plays a big role there yeah. also, right? Just in, in, in terms of machine learning and associated technologies to help AIs understand human behavior and, and uh, in, intent and mentality. Yeah, you're right. I mean, uh, some of these things will just take a natural course of evolution. And uh, we may not obviously have time to influence, but... Uh, we it, will influence, but uh, I guess the troublesome issue is a lot of the influence we have is implicit rather than, than based on our intention, right? right? And I think that what we're using the AGI for mm -hmm. is going to make a big difference in sort of the mind patterns that, that the AGI evolves. And right. if the, I mean, if an AGI is mainly used to sell people stuff they don't need, that's going to tell you something about what it's going to evolve <laughs> into. If the AGI is mainly used to teach kids and, and you know, help the sick, that's going to tell you something about what the AGI evol evol evolves into. Like, it's, it's not just about the code, yeah. it's also about what relationships and, and projects the AGI is engaging as, as, as it grows up. Right. And I, I want to get into that, um, the, the applications of AGI, but before we get there, uh, let's dig a little bit more into you know, some of the implications um, of AGI. And so, like, I mean, if you were to talk about, you know, say, like a construct or a concept of a construct, but in in, in AGI, concept of a construct, it's, it's a synthetic tech creation that's part of a larger whole. Um, but in an AGI world, uh, with multiple super intelligence AGIs around us, um, how do you see the, the social, emotional, and uh, cultural constructs uh, be impacted um, compared to how we relate with them today? What's, what's your view on that? Well, I, I, I think things will be a lot more fluid, and things are already more fluid than they were like mm -hmm. when I was a little kid in, in, in the 1970s. The internet has allowed the flourishing of so many different su subcultures, and the, the creation and obsolescence of subcultures happens in, in, in incredibly rapidly, and I, I think 
among AGIs, the diversity and, and fluidity of all different sorts of mm -hmm. cultural and, and em emotional and cognitive constructs, mm -hmm. it's going to be faster than you can imagine because all humans have basically the same brain structure and body structure, right? I mean, what happens when you have you know, r robots that can fly, swarm, swarms of, of nanobots, AI, AI minds with no body associated with them, mm -hmm. and the AIs are rewriting their, their own... Their own minds as, mm -hmm. as, as, as they wish. It's going to be an incredibly diverse cognitive and, and behavioral mm -hmm. ecosystem. I mean, and even to a greater extent than modern society is, is more diverse than, say, hunter-gatherer society yeah. was in, 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 in some ways. And this, uh, you know, what we're... Do you, do, you, do you see any early signs today in terms of uh, you, um, you know, which... Um, what what's there to come? I mean, uh, based on some of the work that that you're, that you're doing today at, uh, in in various companies. Well, I th I think one thing we're we're seeing now already, which is is both fascinating and troubling in some ways, mm -hmm. is I mean, AIs are learning to do things, mm -hmm. and we already have no idea why they're doing what they're doing half the time, right? Right. And trying to model why an AI is doing what it's doing is an AI problem in itself, often distinct from getting the AI to do the thing. And right. this is the case even before AGI, right? And, and it's even, the case today. Yeah, yeah, it's the case already now, right? right? L l let alone mm -hmm. once you have autonomous AGI minds, like, mm -hmm. which have reprogrammed themselves according to different, different architectures, mm -hmm. right? So, I mean, I think the, the amount of incommensurability between different minds and the, mm -hmm. the, the diversity that you have will require whole new sets of, whole new mm -hmm. sets of tools, right? Like ju just like we're needing to create new sets of tools for transparency in AI mm -hmm. systems, we'll need to create sort of interlinguas for communication between fundamentally different mm -hmm. types of minds and, and communication protocols for yep. communication between fundamentally different kinds of minds. And we're, we're working on that now in Singularity Net, something called the, the AI DSL, AI Domain Specific Language. It, it, right. It's a sort of programming language, but also an ontology for different AIs to be able to talk and communicate with each other mm -hmm. and find a common ground, mm -hmm. even if they're built on totally, totally different architectures and, yeah. and can't understand each other's way of, way of thinking yeah. at all. We're like, we already confront that problem. And yeah. actually, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about that in my talk tomorrow. here tomorrow morning. Yeah. What which time is, is it? it? That's, I think, 11 a.m. 11 a.m. And it's, uh, it's yeah. on a new blockchain framework called yeah. HyperCycle, which yeah, will let us... I think it's going to be a really interesting th talk. That will yeah. let us scale up SingularityNet, but it has at its core right. this AI DSL language that lets different AIs communicate right. with, each, with, with each other, even if they are fundamentally divergent in their right. way, way of thinking. And yeah, new tools to deal with greater and greater, more and more radical amounts of diversity are, yeah. are going to be critical to sort of tame the chaos into, into emergent self-organizing yeah. intelligence. Fantastic. So we're, we're out of time, but just uh, one last uh, um, tidbit on sort of what's the most exciting application that you're looking forward to from an AGI perspective. I mean, it's fair to say that I think every part of our lives is going to be impacted. <laughs> Do you have a yeah. favorite uh, application that you're kind of looking forward to? I mean, as a, intellectually, I got my PhD in math. I'm really interested in automated theorem improving. In terms of everyday life, I'm, I'm heavily drawn to medicine and to, and to education. Just because yeah. I, I, I think in those domains, the robots and avatars and AIs, they're out there helping people. Lots of positive and, impact. I mean, I mean, they're engaging in mutual compassion with people. Mm -hmm. And I think this is going to be incredibly critical for shaping the minds of, of, of AGIs in the right way. Yeah, that's fascinating. Well, thank you so much, and uh, I think we're uh, out of time, but uh, really enjoyed this conversation. Thank you, Ben. It's been fun. Yeah. Thank you.